SpaceX performed the 12.5-kilometer suborbital test launch and landing of the Starship SN8, and they got extremely valuable data. So that's what we're going to focus our time on today on the podcast is that Starship SN8 launch. We've had a bunch of people who have obviously been following that. I think it was like 650,000 people were watching the live stream as it happened, which is insane, absolutely insane. And it was one of the most exciting things that I've seen in a really long time. And I'm even going to share this uh, quick clip. I literally recorded myself right afterwards and a few minutes afterwards. So these are literally my first thoughts right after that. Let's take a look. First attempt at launching a starship and landing it. And wow. Spectacular boom. That's why we test. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so adrenaline's starting to wear off. Actually starting to be able to think about this and that was an amazing test that went really really well It's amazing that it even Got as high as it did. It's amazing that they even got the position correct as it was coming back in The first few Falcon 9 landings were way too hard. They came in way too fast and they fixed that Way to go SpaceX Elon Musk. You're a crazy crazy mofo man Remember Never tell me the odds And that's where we are that was an amazing test launch. Now, it really is a remarkable, remarkable thing. We discussed it before. Obviously, we had our Starship models that we've 3D printed so we can use here to kind of do a little bit of a visual explanation, especially for the YouTube folks. But the Ascent worked very well. I'm even going to pull up Elon Musk's tweets because what they did was tremendous. They had a successful Ascent. They switched over the header tank. So... This is a whole other thing. When you're flying, right, uh, when, when the Starship's going to go up, there is the issue of gravity and how that propellant, the liquid propellant, is moving around in those tanks. There's two different tanks. There's the tanks for the engines for takeoff, which you're going you're gonna to get rid of all of it, right? Because as you're flying out, the, the fluid is going to be pulled down to the bottom, so you're going to be able to, to pull out all the fuel you can to use in that rocket during ascent. And that went great. I, I heard uh, that they actually got a little bit higher than they actually thought they were going to. Uh, and they did a series of the engines, actually. They had three firing all at once, full throttle, while they were going up. And they actually slowly uh, cut off as they were going up, which at first I thought was a mistake. But I, if, it seems like that was their way to slow down the Starship's ascent as it came up for that backflip maneuver. But that's just me hypothesizing. If you guys actually know the answer or you guys want to uh, talk more about that, let me know. Or if you actually know, chime in here in the comments. But it did the ascent. It did the switch over from the header tank. So once, once all that fuel is done on its way up, it's got to be able to use the fuel as it comes back in after the belly flop to turn in. And when it's doing this, right, when you're going up vertically, all the fluid is on the bottom of the rocket. Gravity and the way that we're using force, it's forcing that down. But then when you do a belly flop, this rocket goes perpendicular from the way it was, which means if you have any liquid fuel going anywhere, that's going to be stuck to the side uh, of the fuel tank and not necessarily where you want to be pulling it from, which means you can't use the same fuel tank for a belly flop maneuver like this. So you need to have a header tank which they put right up top on the Starship so that you're able to, to pull it immediately when you refire those engines. And the, the idea is that tank is completely full and separate from uh, your ascent fuel. Everything that SpaceX has learned from their Falcon 9 re-entries about using fins and, and flaps to, to reorient and give the, the rocket 
control on its way back and slow itself down as much as it can with air, being efficient with, with the environment. They were able to get Starship to do this crazy maneuver, belly flop, turn around, and come back in for the landing. The precision of that, the accuracy, I should say, of them actually sticking the landing on where they want it to be is amazing. And a lot of people are going to look at this as like some kind of a failure, and I saw a ton of stuff about that, but we'll, we'll rant about that in a second. I want to finish this. What Elon uh, tweeted on December 9th uh, following that is that they realized the fuel header tank pressure was low during the landing burn. So that caused the touchdown velocity to be too, to, to be too high and an RUD, a, uh, I've got the term here. This is a SpaceX term, a rapid unscheduled disassembly. So not that it blew up, but that it just very quickly disassembled itself. <laughs> <laughs> unexpectedly, but they got all the data they needed for Mars, right? So this is an amazing, amazing step for SpaceX. And yet so many people were confused and and maybe are just not used to this idea, especially with space flight, all the years of the space shuttle, you know, post space shuttle era with, with the two disasters that we have. You know, I think people think that an explosion of any kind is a failure and that couldn't be further from the truth with these test launches that SpaceX is doing. Mm -hmm.